we're going to go ahead and set up some basic operations here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is create a face operation. And I got my tool one. This is going to be a CNMG. And I'll just say face part for my comment. Now I'm not going to worry about any feeds and speeds. But I am going to worry about my parameters here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and let it use the stock. I do want to finish at Z0. And I want to do a rough step over of 50 thousandths. So we can at least see some kind of tool paths here. And I'll just green check OK. So right off the bat, Mastercam already knows where the stock's at. It makes this face operation super easy. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to go over to, um, we're going to do a rough OD. So let's see, I'll do a can cycle rough. This is going to give me my type 1 rough operation here. Uh, type 1 being always climbing as it goes back. And I'm going to say I want to rough everything from this location to here. And we'll green check OK. Now for this, I'm still going to use the CNMG. I'm going to say uh, turn OD for my comments. I like giving it comments, especially when it comes to the can cycles. And I'm going to go to my can rough parameters. Now as you see here, I can see my Z stock, X stock. And it also gives me a preview down at the bottom that we can always look at. You'll notice that if I change the R, and I hit tab, it updates the R value. So you get a quick view of what you're going to get inside of your output. Um, in this case, it's showing the two line uh, new standard code for turning can cycles. Now, you do have plunge parameters here. And to be honest, I really don't want it to plunge into any areas with this tool. So I'm simply going to leave that alone. But I do want to adjust the lead in, lead out for this particular part, uh, specifically because I got this chuck jaw here. So by doing so, let's go ahead and shorten this up. I'm going to go to my lead out. And I'm going to say I want to shorten this by, let's say, 0.6. Give it 100 thousandths more than that chuck jaw. If you want to display your profile and kind of see where it's going to end here with that little line. I don't want to save that geometry though. I'm going to green check OK. So right off the bat we have a tool collision with stock. I'm going to say continue. We're going to look at some of these parameters here. So just below that I got extend contour to stock. Now without this option Mastercam does not know where that stock's located on this can cycle. As you see here it's skipping quite a bit. So this is going to be an option that we want to turn on for sure. What you'll notice is that the X and Z value change here when I do so. So just an example of how this does a live update, you know, not just after you do the preview, but even before you generate this toolpath. So now when we go back, I got a nice clean can cycle, and I'm going to go ahead and save my part. Next toolpath we're going to talk about is going to be a uh, rough for this particular operation here. And for this, I actually have a button tool loaded. Let's go ahead and do a, uh, we'll do a dynamic rough for this just to see what this toolpath looks like. So you'll notice right off the bat that I'm actually running off of a solid and I am in my solid chaining manager and it creates that cross section for me. I'm going to go ahead and select this particular area on that cross section for this undercut. Now, Mastercam does need to use a tool as such to do the dynamic rough. So that's why I have this button tool loaded. And we'll just say uh, dynamic turn, if I can type today. Again, I'm not going to worry about feeds and speeds. I'm more focused on the parameters right now. And for this uh, particular step over, let's, let's say we'll do a 10% step over, 10% toolpath radius. And I do have some stock being left behind here. I'll just say uh, 10 and 10 for X and Z. And you know what, let's go ahead and look at our plunge parameters right off the bat. And you'll notice that it automatically goes to the plunging of this particular area. And 
Let's go ahead and green check OK on this particular toolpath. So now I have a dynamic toolpath being done. And of course I can edit if I want to go forward or back or zigzag back and forth. But uh, let's go ahead and back plot this. Just kind of take a look at what this tool is doing. And we'll speed it up just a little bit. And we get a nice high speed turning operation for this OD to rough out that undercut. All right, so I like that dynamic turn there. I'm going to go ahead and save this particular one.